Um, I really do want to say thank you for giving your time, for signing up for, for this, and for working for the betterment of Bennington. Uh, our first experience, uh, Dan and I are permanent members of this committee. Our first experience was excellent, and I, I, I perceive this one to be a, right up there with that, so we're all fine. Um, I want to say a couple of things, though, just so that for information for everybody's sake, and then I'm going to do a quick uh, round of introductions. Uh, bathrooms, should you need them, are through that door, and the first door to your left leads you down a hallway where there are bathrooms on the right. I think that's correct. It is correct. Um, I appreciate everybody coming masked and keeping masks on direct throughout the duration. Uh, I think uh, one of our um, members last time remarked about that and how much more comfortable that made her feel. And as uncomfortable sometimes as masks can be, this is, I think, uh, the least we can do for each other. Um, people who may come in the back, may, who observe, will be in the back. They will not uh, be participants. Um, they're just here to observe. Um, Cat TV is here to observe as well, just so that you're aware. Um, and uh, for introductions, and I will again introduce myself first, and, and I'm going to do it. Uh, just going to, apparently my name tag disappeared. Just so that you know. <laughs> I probably ate it sometime after the last meeting. I don't know what I did with it, but it's not anybody's fault. Um, my name is Bruce Lee Clark. I'm on the select board, and I'm going to ask you each to tell one weird factoid about yourself. It doesn't have to be what I do for a living. I will tell you that here's the one weird factoid about me, or there are several, but this is one I'm using today. Um, I worked my way through chunks of college, um, playing trombone on a riverboat in the St. Lawrence River through the Thousand Islands, uh, playing jazz trombone. That was my I didn't know that. That was <laughs> that it's it was it was a hoot. Except <laughs> in weather like this, which would come up the St. Lawrence. And we were on the top deck of this real paddle wheeler. So you can imagine what <laughs> so when we had to skedaddle from that it was not easy. Put a big expensive bone in my hand. Um, I'm gonna get oh, Bob, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, quickly, I'm one of the Catholic priests in town. I'm a member of the religious order called Holy Cross. It's at Holy Cross College down in Massachusetts. We're connected with Notre Dame University out in Indiana. So that's my trivia piece. But my trivia is I delivered mail to Jenny Gore Hoover. Did you really? I did. As a kid, well, I just came out of high school. I went and worked with the FBI for a short period of time until Uncle Sam on the other side came and wanted to uh, drop me. Mm. But for about six months, off and on, I delivered mail to Jagger. Jagger had an inbox and an outbox. You'd, take, you'd drop the stuff on, you'd put the stuff in the outbox and get out. He would never look up. <laughs> no kidding. Never look And the last piece, as a young kid, I knew this, I heard this. There was a relationship between me and Tolson. I heard about that back then. Huh. So, huh. we're down right back then. So, that's what you know. That's a good number. I'm also Daniel Ferrara, Bennington Police Department, for the last just over four years. Um, never good at the weird little fact that I'm always It's okay. I, I feel like my life is just my life, and then it just flows, so I never really pay attention to what's weird other than that. It's all right. But I guess, I guess the, the fact of mine is. One of my hobbies, anyway, is I uh, enjoy playing rugby. You can play rugby. Good. Good for you. It hurts just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> how many times have we? Please, how many times they have to show up at your place? <laughs> uh, one year we had three.
free. The <laughs> 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 final part is pretty, pretty good. Okay. Oh, lightning be green. This is just Catherine, but many of you probably know me by Kate. That's the name that I go by. And um, again, factoids hard to come up with. Um, but I will say that this has been a really difficult time for all of us, but for me in particular, I hate being confined at home. I hate this whole idea of social isolation, social distancing, wearing masks. It's it's not been fun. <laughs> and I guess um, I took up a hobby years ago, but I put it to good use. I made quilts during ah, this time, and I actually made two two twin size quilts, and I'm on my third. So um, <laughs> yeah, I think this might get me through the next few months. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm Greg Berta. Um Factoids. Um, I had a boat before I had a car for transportation because I grew up in Salem, Massachusetts. Ah. I had the water and uh -huh. my grandfather was a lobsterman and it was easier for me to get around and go to places I hang I hung out at in a boat than it was in a car. Yeah. Cool. Yes, um, I'm Alana Hart, and um, the most random fact I can think of at the moment is that I um, recently got my son in Pant Farm, but I have been like much more obsessed with the keys. It's been a lot of fun. This is good to know. I just said, Alana, I'm sorry, an ant farm. Yeah, I got her son in an ant farm. Oh, an ant farm. <laughs> yeah, you can see you. it's. it's it's Part of it is getting used to the room. Yeah, it's okay. not an easy room to get used to. Um, I'm Dan Monks. I'm the uh, assistant town manager for the town of Bennington. Worked for the town for now about 22 years. Um, factoid: um, I was actually born in Brazil. I spent a total of six weeks there before my folks uh, brought me to the United States. But uh, that's uh, not not something that most people know about. But. There you go. Well, what do I have to do with town? Michelle. I'm just going to say I'm Michelle Farrow with the Bennington Police Department, <laughs> and I work for the chief. There you go. Thanks, Michelle. I won't make you say it. <laughs> Although next time you should be expecting You should be, because I think this is going to be my game for the six weeks that we do this. A um, couple of things just uh, to get us started and to give you a sense of where, what our task is. Uh, as you can see, and I think I, as I said in uh, one of the emails, we're going to use the Bennington Police Department version of fair and impartial policing uh, as the starting point. Um, and our, our tasks should be focused primarily, though I'm going to give us a, a little time, because we have, we do, oh, I should say, we do not have to use up all three hours. We are not required to sit here for three hours. <laughs> so it's not like one of those things where we have to stay. So, um, and the thunderstorms are rolling in. Please, if you have your cell phone with you, um, unless you absolutely need it on, put it on mute. Um, mine right now is on vibrate, which still makes too much noise. Um, we're going to focus primarily on the purpose, policies, and definitions. However, if there are things, uh, the, the rest of it is, is procedure, and that really belongs to the department. However, it's important that the procedure is derived from the purpose, and particularly the policy statement. And if you think of things, or you've come across things where you think the document could be improved, um, I think we, should, we have enough time. I have just a couple of places. Um, we have enough time so that we can send that information back to the chief. The process that we're going through, just to remind you, is we're doing this drafting right here. Uh, any changes we make will be identified up here on the screen. Can you all see the screen reasonably with the eyesight that you have? Good. Can, please let me know because we can actually make this even bigger, can't we, Michelle? Go in the bottom right hand corner. 
But let's go up to 140. Yeah, oh, there you go. Oh, that's even better. Thank that you. Too Thank you. No, it's not too big. It's <laughs> great. I see those old numbers. I know. That's, that's 158, I think. That's great. So, um, when Michelle, when you make a change or if you make a change, it will come through me. So you need to, we need to communicate with each other. But she's only going to listen to any changes that I do. Oh, you know, oh. to me. <laughs> Is that a three hours? Wow. Well, hey, here we are. Hang on. That's why I have an actor here. Although I just lost my computer. Here we are. <laughs> I have it. That's not a big help. Michelle, do you have it? I do. Okay. It's, the, it's that that doesn't count. Okay. Let me finish the process. When we get done today, Michelle's going to take it home, or take it back to the office. And if it's coming in, that's the only reason you close it. It's not a good is it coming in really hard? No, it's the part of your Oh, well, we are just trying to create a family. And I realize, hopefully, this will be the When we're done, Michelle's going to give it to Dan. Dan's going to look it over for other things like punctuation. There's some organizational notes, that kind of stuff. He's going to then send it to me. I'm going to again proofread it. Then I'm going to send it back out to each of you for about 48 hours. So that you have a chance to see it before it comes back to me. I then will give it back to Dan. Or we'll, we haven't really done this yet with any of them. It will then be disseminated to three places for review. Um, three places. The chief will review it for comment. The town attorney, Rob Wilmington, in his office, and the state's attorney will review it. All those will review it. Once they're done making their comments, we'll try to make sure we're back to a, a form that, that makes sense. And then it will go to the select board. And the select board will uh, have two sessions with it. One to introduce and have public comment if there is any, it will be on the agenda. And then the second one will be uh, comment and adoption if the select board so chooses to adopt. But that's how it's going to work. Um, and I think. <laughs> figuring out how this is going to work, but you know, did you all happen to manage to bring copies of this Bennington PD policy with you? Or you did. I did. I did you not. did not. That's okay. I've got an extra one. Does anyone have a, I mean, there's flashlights on our phones. Yeah. Um, okay. Bob, you're, you can use my word. Assuming at some point electricity is going to pop back on. I'll open the windows as soon as. So, did everybody sort of get the idea of how this is going to work? Then we can get. Okay. <coughs> so, here's my thoughts. What we'll do is do have a sort of a generalized discussion to start with about the policy and what it what we can do and what we cannot do. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, what we can do and what we cannot do. If you have particular questions that you want to make sure that we cover, the easiest way to do that is by page number and line number just so that I know what it is. 
I will try to make note of it so that we don't lose any of those. I think I'm okay. I can see fairly well. Um, this comes from growing up reading under my covers instead of letting my parents see that I was not sleeping. Um, so, let me give you a for instance. Um, do you, you all see on the beginning, I'm just going to give you a for instance of where I think one place that I actually think can be omitted. On um, page one under purpose, all policies should have a purpose statement and then a policy statement. It's not redundant. It gives context to the policy, basically. So, where it says, after, um, after the word way on line 14, it says, the Bennington Police Department is required to adopt each component with the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council's model fair and impartial policing policy. The Bennington Police Department may adopt additional components. All that is true, but it's not part of the purpose of the policy. I would think if that were there, I mean, if we wanted to keep that, that's a great footnote to let everybody know that the origin of this policy is the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council's model of model fair and partial policing policy. They are required by state statute, which I think I gave you, um, to, to adopt a policy that's in keeping with that model. So it has to have all of the components of that model. It, in other words, that's the floor under which we operate. We can't go below the floor. We can't go above the floor, if you will. So I'm going to suggest that lines 14, 15, it's half of 14, then all of 15, and all of 16 be crossed out, or placed in a footnote at the bottom of the page. And I know the footnotes here are at the end. Those are end notes. I hate end notes. <laughs> but that's a personal preference thing. I don't care. But it should be a, I don't know how you want to designate that, Michelle. But did, does everybody see what I mean by that? that? By the way, those statements are not in the model policy, those last two sentences. They, they were probably attached to a directive, I'm assuming. But I don't know where they came Okay, I, I'm already lost because I don't know what you're talking about number 14. So. Line, I'm looking at line numbers and page numbers. So I'm under the purpose, which is on the very first page. Okay. It's that the page. only thing that appears on the first page. Yeah. Where is that? The purpose. The, the problem is the printouts don't have the numbers. Yeah. Oh, you're right, because I didn't do it that way. Okay, let me just, I, my apologies. Okay, my apologies. Uh, you're right. I did not send you. You may not have printed that the one front that has page numbers. If we were looking line, at the screen, they would have line numbers. Well. Yes, if we were looking yeah. at the screen. So on, do page, not have a screen. <laughs> on page one, under purpose, there's one long, in my view, perfect sentence. The very first sentence. It goes, the purpose of this policy is to require that all things that police department members, blah, 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 all the way to enforce laws in an equitable and impartial way. Period, right? Is that the end of the purpose? Okay. After that, in the Bennington police policy, which is the general order, if you're looking at, if you're looking at the, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns version, there's nothing else that happens after that, right? Jump it jumps right to policy. That's, that, in my view, is what Bennington's should look like. Bennington's doesn't need to have the second two sentences, which talk about they need to adapt the policy and they need to, uh, and they can add any additional components. Does that make sense now? Please ask if you don't know. Does it all make sense? Okay, does that make more sense? Well, it, I guess you know, I'm, I'm looking at this purpose statement, and I'm looking at this purpose statement. So and the one, okay, it depends on which version we're looking at. Right. Don't even look at this one. Right, I'm looking at this one. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's being left out. 
these last two sentences. You just don't want those last two sentences. I don't think they belong in a purpose because they aren't about the purpose of the policy. They can be a footnote. I think a legitimate footnote. Okay. And so Michelle, when Michelle works on that, she may leave those out. She will it'll you'll see it up here. It'll be crossed out in red. But there may be, it may be copied in a footnote down below. And Michelle, if you can't do that right now, don't worry about it. No. Yeah, I'm just deleting it and I put it in the footnote. Right. Does, do you all see how it doesn't really relate to, to the subject matter of the policy? That's the big thing. Does anybody else have anything else regarding the purpose of the policy? Because I think remembering that we can't subtract stuff that's in the model, which, and if you look at the, if you had a copy of the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns version, that's actually the model policy. There's also a model policy from the IACP. That one is very different, and we, we can use that to supplement, but we can't use that to substitute. Because it doesn't include the language which the state is requiring the department to have. Does that make sense? So the ICP language is important, I think, because it looks at it slight, at this slightly differently. Come on, I'll like to see. <laughs> Is this, are we there? Because I think we can get to the meat of this, which is the purpose, I mean the policy itself. Which is found in the Bennington policy, it's found on page two. <coughs> and it's my hope that we will actually look at this twice, at least the opening paragraph. Because once we go through the definitions, we may want to come back and make sure that our policy matches the definitions, or and vice versa. Does anybody have, and Bob, I don't remember whether I do, does anybody have anything regarding the actual statement of the policy itself? You marked that policy development there, the second to the last line. Oh, I may have underlined it or oh, I it. Okay, so it may have been No, that's right. Yeah, no, actually, I think it's, um, yes, the Benton Police, I probably marked that because that's what we're doing is policy development. So, the objective of the Bennington Police Department will implement a combination of best practices, including, but not limited to, and then it's a list, hiring, and service training, Policy development, supervision, reporting and investigating processes, appropriate discipline, and community outreach slash partnerships. That all makes sense. Are there any questions about that? Any comments about that language? So, what do you notice about inter, well, then it comes to a word called introduction. And then what do you notice? Anything? It's exactly the same language as the beginning of the policy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm trying to run, understand in my own mind. Yeah. It, so it, what I'm looking at right now. No, it's this is the one that we're looking. No, is this one we're looking? No. Well, that's, that's something that's 
No, that's gravel. Oh, right. so that's the gravel. Yeah. It's the town of Hennepin. Which is very close to this, but it's not the same. No, that, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Okay. If, yeah, if we had electricity, it would be right up there. And you wouldn't need it. Yeah, but I'm not going to I hear you. I got you. I got you. I got you. So my question is, does anybody know why? Can anybody come up with a reason that I simply can't come up with? Why that? I went and looked at the Vermont Lakes of Cities and Towns version, and it doesn't have this whole section. It, it certainly doesn't have that paragraph that is doubled from the policy. And my concern about that is basically well, I, I don't understand why we do that. Dan, do you have any notion? No, I, I think it's probably more of a typographical error than anything. That whole title introduction in that paragraph should probably be removed. And then down below where it says policy again, that probably should just say definition. I just, yeah. I think that's just a... I, I do too. And I do think, however, does everybody see the section where it says, because partnership with Vermont residents is the most effective way to ensure public policy? Maintaining the public's trust in a is a primary concern. That, it seems to make sense as a sort of a subparagraph under the policy. Okay. Yeah. Does everybody agree with that? That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, enforcement, oh, the other, the other part of this, and I understand why this was sort of written as an introduction, but I actually think it's all under policy. And so I would, what I would do is suggest and we'll see what this looks like eventually. Michelle, if you could, for the moment anyway, cross out the introduction and cross out that first whole paragraph. The paragraph that starts with employees and ends in activities that's under after introduction. Does that make sense? So if we, in, if we cross that off, I don't think we've lost anything. We're still within the four square bounds of the model policy. And here's an, an, a second important concept, and I'm almost thinking it would be worth another paragraph. The first part of this is about partnership with Vermont residents, da 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 da. And then about four lines down, it says, enforcement of civil immigration law is a federal responsibility, and the agency should not engage in such enforcement, except as otherwise outlined in this policy. That, by the way, is it's an essential part of this policy. But it ought to be, in my view, could be, it could be, I don't know whether it ought to be. My question is, does it, should it be set apart even here, or should it go, it, it belongs here. My question is, does it need to have its own paragraph? Well, I think it, since, since it's a, uh, another thought that it should have its own paragraph. Ruth? Yeah, Kate? Um, I'm wondering, the format, is there any opportunity here to change this introduction and to eliminate, as you said, those first, that first paragraph, since it's reiterating what's already been there? And just yep. Instead of saying introduction, rephrase it as the purpose. Well, the, we, as, as in the Vermont cities and towns, they have the purpose, and then they go into the policy. So right, they do have the purpose, and the purpose of this policy. If you look, if you look at the front, you're right, Kate. I think yes. To answer your question, yes, we can change the I organizational change. structure. Yes, okay. that is possible. I, I'm. However, I do think that the purpose of the statement of the policy is to require that the Bennington Police Department members conduct policing in a fair and impartial manner uh, to clarify the circumstances of blah, 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 blah. You can hear that. That's all the purpose, and that's, that makes sense. And help me out, because I, just, I can't look at two things at once, and I can't certainly read the Vermont Lakes of Cities and Towns. Oh, I have one in mind. We should probably do this. Um, so, 
So, yes, so, yes, like the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns has under the policy three, cent, three, three paragraphs, right? Yeah. Under policy. I actually think that we could follow more closely that Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns one um, because we would have See, they have three paragraphs, including the first paragraph that we have as policy, right? So if you look, if you just skip, if you eliminate the word introduction and eliminate the next paragraph on the Bennington policy, then we have three paragraphs as well, right? Under policy. Does that make sense, Kate? You're looking at Well, I, I do have three paragraphs under introduction. Is I want to eliminate the word introduction completely, as right. if it didn't exist. Okay. Because I think that was inserted by somebody for no good reason. Right. Because I don't okay. think that it is an introduction. Okay. So what I'm right. actually suggesting is a fourth alternative, which is a fourth paragraph, which sets out this issue about federal immigration status investigations. It's a whole huge issue under fair and impartial policing. Yes, I see that almost as like the emphasis of this policy, which I was surprised by. Ah. So, um, if that's the case, then what I was just saying is okay. for clarification purposes, mm -hmm. yep. if we had a policy statement, then you talked about, instead of having the word because, you could say the purpose of this policy is, and then have a, a purpose statement, and then you go into the policy as well. We already have a purpose statement. That, that's, and the, and well, the thing is... Well, we don't have a caption of purpose. That's yeah, yeah because we do, on the page in front of that. The very first page. Oh, sure. yes, okay. See, it, it's just odd that it's, said, yes, it's, in a, it's in a page by itself, which is just an odd printout. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Sorry. It, um, so I actually think that I, I would say that your observation um, that the issue about immigration, I would put it this way, Kate. I would say that it is an important part of this policy. It is not the sum and total of its emphasis. It's, it, is a, it is a chunk, which is why I was suggesting that, the, that at least the sentence uh, enforcement of civil immigration law is a federal responsibility and agency should not and I would say, and the Bennington Police Department should not engage in such enforcement except as otherwise outlined in this policy. That should be separated out as its own paragraph. And I know for English teachers, English teacher, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. single sentence paragraphs are anathema. I get that. They're not in policy statements and not in statutes. It's just because, because that's how we work. And it, it's, it's, it is, it's, it's not abnormal. It seemed to me that the whole business about immigration, which is a huge part of this, uh, because, and Dan, you can help me out if I'm misstating this, um, the issue about federal and local enforcement of immigrant, uh, the issue about the way the feds have been enforcing immigration law has come into conflict with various state level jurisdictions about um, federal immigration law. So the, the feds have a certain view of it because it is specifically, immigration is a federal issue. Mm -hmm. And it's by constitution, it's actually a legislative issue. That's the branch. Um, most states have, or many states have a, have a statement somewhere in statute that says local agencies are not entitled, we do not want local agencies, it's something, something like this, shall not engage in immigration enforcement. To some degree that can be true, but to other, other degrees that's not true. And this policy helps sort of guide the police department through that what I consider to be a very difficult issue. Does that make some sense? No, I hear what you're saying. Um, but I'm afraid that there are other 
things that I thought might have been getting lost. Okay. Other things that should be given some emphasis here too. That Perfect. Now. Why not? Can you tell me one? Well, for instance, um, racial bias. <laughs> I don't think I don't really see where that's given a lot of. Okay. Um, attention. Okay. So. And I just think there are probably some things that happen at a local level. Right. More often than dealing with immigration issues. Oh, I'm, that yeah. Want to yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think, oh, yeah. I mean, the interesting thing is, I mean, Dan can help me out more than, because I don't know what their, the quantity is, but I would suspect the number of immigration issue cases that where it could come up is relatively small as a portion of the whole. Am I wrong in that observation and maybe incorrect? No, I mean, uh, the only time really we come across immigration stuff isn't derived from a call of service per se. It's not like we get reports saying there's a bunch of illegal immigrants in this basement at this address type thing. Right. Um, where we encounter them for the most part would be on like a traffic stop or something like that. Right. Where there's someone that isn't legally in the country is in that car or something to those effects. Right. Um, so yeah, that, that being said, that it is very far uh, yeah. between the instances. Right. I used to live on the border with Canada and, and the local police up there were very have engaged all the time with, uh, with uh, citizens coming across from Canada or people coming across from Canada who were not citizens either of Canada or of the United States. But here I don't think it's a big deal. So maybe keeping that right where it belongs is and and um, and, it, and it really does depend on what we, it does talk about based on any personal characteristics or immigration status. So you're right, immigration status is sort of hard back. And that's just part of the model policy. But we may want to emphasize things about racial bias. Or at least mm -hmm. include it. Yeah, well, it may very well be, I actually think it's included, but I'm, I'm wanting you to, to help me out on that, because, it, because that's, that's the purpose of this committee. Okay. okay. So let's pass my, is it, will we know if the electricity comes back on in this building? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, will, the light will actually just pop up, it doesn't, it's not like a trip to a generator. Didn't try to break or anything and then no. Okay. Okay. I'm just I know this building like nothing. I don't know anything about it. Okay. I have a question that we have no sanctuary city issues in, in the state, do we? Like in the south where I came from. Right. That would be immigration authorities want to go into those cities and right. or the state of the city police would be involved. Certainly Bennington is not. At the sanctuary town in our case. Um, the only one that I, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's a good question. But the answer I think is no. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's where it really becomes. Oh, it's very good. I was in Austin, Texas with that. Oh yeah, huge. Um, so, so for example, Kate, if we were to. If you know the last paragraph of the policy section, which what I would consider to be Roman numeral two. Oh, hold on, just let me get so the last paragraph of the policy section, under remember you can if you want under Bennington's version, you can cross off the word introduction and in as if that doesn't exist. So it's it's to achieve these objectives, the Bennington Police Department will. Right, and then yeah, it lists. And on the uh, the month we it says this this department. Right. So and right, and I actually think it's nice to have the Bennington mm -hmm. Police Department staying in there as the department. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll implement a comp 
a combination of best practices, including but not limited to. You see that list? I, I, you know, I'm I do. Right before the word definition. Are we still in the thing to place policy? Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so if, if, it's policy it's, it's if, policy. It, if it comes right before, oh, geez, that's right. That is really, well, that word, we're going to. Well, the policy statement is over here. That's all I have. Uh, here's the policy statement. Nope. To achieve these objectives. I realize this is, and in the dark, this is especially confusing. I'll admit. I wish it was on the board, then I'm sure. Absolutely. And the moment, on, the moment the power comes on is the moment we'll have it on the board. We'll find out what Michelle's been doing over there. <laughs> but Bruce, just for clarification for sure. me again, and I'm sorry to be a little thick this, but is Roman numeral two, is that policing and partiality? Is that what you're looking at? Where no, no. Be, I'm, I'm going up way before that. We haven't gone even through definitions yet. Okay. If you go under purpose and then policy, and right before the Bennington Police Department says policy again, which I would cross out, Michelle, um, it says there's a paragraph that's, that gives a list of, to achieve these objectives, the Bennington Police Department will, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or yes, will implement a combination of best practices, including but not limited to. Yes, yes. You see that? Yes. Okay, so for example, if I was writing this policy, I might want to put something about, it does talk about in-service training, but you could be even more specific, right? About? What type of training? Yeah, yeah. bias training, yeah. what for? Yeah. You know, you could even say hiring, in-service training, especially bias training, although I you know, the evidence on that is so so. But that's where you, one of the places where we could add something specifically, if we wish, okay. to create a bigger emphasis on. Do you see what I mean? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. I agree. Good. It isn't the only place, but it is certainly a place. Does anybody have any suggestions? We can, we're going to. Come back to this, but I'm. Well, Bruce. Yes. Could we include racial profiling in that yes. statement? <clears throat> yes, I mean training to prevent racial profiling. Well, or just training, or I don't know if racial profiling as a category should well, be its own separate mention. I think that's already, I mean, I think we've got to be careful because that's already addressed. If you look right above, it says, so not be singled out for scrutiny but on the basis of personal characteristics. And if you look at the definition of personal characteristics, that's a pretty comprehensive list of things that you can't profile. Right. Or, or, or profile. That's why I wanted to say definitions. The, the, when we get through the definitions, we may want to come back and see if we've missed something. It's always harder to figure out where the omissions are until you want to it. Sure. Okay. And and the only thing, the reason why I would be reluctant to put anything about racial profiling there is in where you just suggested is these are all supposed to be categories of best practices, right. not improper practices. So when we get to the list of improper practices, we have to make sure that racial profiling is in there. And I think it is, but I as the so if you eventually, be, between now and the time you leave, um, let's just order a five. Um, if you can arrange, or even afterwards, okay, even afterwards, you can communicate with me and, and we can add almost anything if it fits within that place and it doesn't change the meaning of, if it doesn't detract from the, it doesn't lower the bar. Can't so lower the bar. We can Dan, raise the bar. Could I ask a question of Dan? 
Sure. Dan, do you think that racial profiling filing is, is um, already included in this by implication? It's not even by implication, it's by explicit reference. No, not, but you were saying it's already there, so why, I guess. What I'm, I'm saying is it already prohibits it. But, yes, it's policy. Like fair, it's not that fair. Well, it doesn't read the definition. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, here's going to be the key. So, for example, if you look at the middle paragraph of the policy, of policy, which says that um, if they can be assured they will not be singled out for scrutiny on the basis of personal characteristics or immigration status, what does personal uh, characteristics mean? And you, to do that, you have to go down to definitions. And it's the second definition in, it would be, in my case, the way I would number it, letter B. And it says personal okay, so characteristics yeah. may include, but it's not limited to actual, and here's the important part, actual or perceived. Because okay. it could be somebody's perceived identity, somebody's perceived race, right? Okay. Or ethnicity. National, national origin, color, gender, sexual orient, uh, orientation, gender identity, marital status, mental or physical disability, age, religion, or socioeconomic status. And anything, those are the classic list of protected groups. But, you know, except in Vermont, here's an interesting one, statutorily, Vermont veterans status. I think Vermont. Vietnam veteran status. If you're a Vietnam veteran, you may not be discriminated on explicitly under statute. Because Vietnam veterans were. Mm -hmm. yes. So, you know, I would, you know, I I could see adding veteran status as a personal characteristic. Mm -hmm. It's it's there by implication because it says it's included. Mm -hmm but not limited to. You see what I mean? Okay. But I mean, in my, and I don't know that the Bennington PD, I don't know of anybody who would necessarily discriminate on the basis of veteran status, except what I've seen it happen, not here, but in another city. Well, and if it's mentioned in Vermont statutes, would it be appropriate then to make sure it's mentioned in local statutes too? I mean, in, in a local policy, I think, you know, you, yeah. You could. It could be added as better instead. Mm -hmm. So religion, veterans, status, and socioeconomic status. It could be right there. I have one more word to include in that list. Yes. Demographics. Say more about what you mean by demographics. Well, when I think of demographics, I think of an issue like homelessness. Ah. Because I think in Bennington we have an issue with homelessness. Yes, we do. And I know that the police force, I'm sure people on the police force come into, you know, that becomes part of the work that they do, mm -hmm. dealing with homeless people. So That's it. that might be a way to address yep. the issue of homeless Yep. I do believe that's included in the word socioeconomic status. No, it does not. Homeless people have no source of income and they don't have an address. You right, know, that's so what socioeconomic status means. It's a little harder to recommend that they are also included under socioeconomic That's aspects. an interesting... I, I, I see Dan's point, but I also see Kate's point. I, in some sense... See, well, let, me, let, me, let me try it, for instance. It's Dan, this man over here can help me out. Yeah, this, it's possible that a person can be homeless. And to have money, right? Pardon? It's possible to be homeless and have access to a chunk of change, enough to rent. But you can't rent because you are schizophrenic, for instance. I know of one person, and I'm thinking of one person specifically, who has a fair amount of money set aside in Social Security disability. Clearly homeless. I'd like to add something. And we talked about it before, and I understand you did it. Uh, I'd like to talk about the whole mental illness area. It says mental and physical disabilities, but illness is another category than mental 
disabilities. I think mental disabilities could be from, you know, being Down syndrome or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mental illness to me is a critical issue mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed. I think when you're placing, you're dealing with, you don't know what you're going to deal with some, when you walk up to someone's house. Or right. Or someone. Mental illness clearly is a problem. And it's not necessary. Not necessary. I know that legally, those of us who are lawyers, we tend to think of all mental illness as a defined as a disability. But I, I see the connotative kind of difference. Yeah. So right now, this is an exercise, right? So we're thinking about what we might add to this list. And Dan, I agree. Dan Monks, I agree that it may be redundant to some degree, but and I, we can worry about that. But for them, so we don't lose these. Can we add Michelle? Just we'll come back to this, and hopefully it'll be on the screen. Somewhere in this list, um, maybe after religion, put a comma. Where are you? With I'm on line 46. May not turn yes. into line 46 no. anymore. Yep. yep. After religion, put a comma. Put homelessness. I'm going to say that's better than demographics. Yeah. Because demographics doesn't mean I, I was blind, blind to what you were thinking about. But homelessness, I get. It may not be the only form of demographic issue, but for now, it's temporary. This yeah. is a place. And for Bob. And we put, and again, this is right now, we're just, it talks about mental or physical disability, comma, also on line 46. You see where it says that? Yeah. After that comma, before age, right, mental illness. It may not stay there. We, we may decide that, but right now, for right now, I think it's important. It's probably more important than veterans status, Vietnam veterans status. Yep. I agree. Because it'd be subsumed, I mean, most of the encounters that the Vietnam PD will have with uh, Vietnam veterans where there's any kind of confrontational stuff will be subsumed under one of those two categories. Homelessness and or mental illness, which Quantitatively, doesn't sound the same as mental disability. It seems different. It is clearly mental disability to me is someone has developmental issues in their life. Mental illness is something they pick up as they go along with life, or maybe they have from the very beginning. But mental illness, yeah, is a critical area that I think we need to address. I I agree, and it'll also fit in later. I'm thinking about a later policy that we're going to deal with. Thank you. Um, which has to do with um, the police department and, and what help we can provide in the process of doing um, stuff with people with mental illness or experiencing a mental illness, yeah. something or other. Um, so we've changed a couple of things, and I think that's actually, it's, none of that is wrong, because remember, this is not intended to be an exhaustive list. But we, the list under personal characteristics is not intended to be an exhaustive list. Okay. All right. And yes, if I so say we something. We want it to be inclusive. We want it to be as inclusive as possible without making it so long that the officer, remember, who has to know this. <laughs> remember, this, yeah, this is always important. Policies, and somebody asked this at a, Dan, I think it was at a select board meeting. What's the purpose of, you know, why do we have policies and how is that different than, this, than an ordinance? An ordinance is a rule, a set of rules that governs everybody in the town. Right? That's what, that's what it is. So when it says, I can't fire my shotgun, which I don't own, <laughs> out, out of my backyard, because um, my neighbor is picking me up. I can't do that. I can't just pull it out and chew it. Um, that's an ordinance. That, that, that governs my actions. Policy governs, if it's a select board policy, it governs the select board. If it's a 
Bennington PD policy. It governs the Bennington PD. If it's a Bennington uh, employee policy, it governs the employees of the Bennington Can. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we, we have to make this inclusive, I agree. But well, also, simplistic as possible. And we gotta be, we gotta be, it's gotta be usable. Because if it isn't usable, if, if we get it so complex that, and I think this is already close to too complex. Mm -hmm. I mean, it gets there. Yeah. Um, what do you make of the definition of bias policing? Michelle is a member 
uh, as an employee, right, of the Bevington PD, correct? Sure. So you, this 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 policy relates to you, right? Yeah. Is that all? So can, have you changed that on line twelve yeah. of that? Yeah. It's now and any any person. Any person. Yeah. That's much, much better. Much better. Thank you. Yes. Good, good catch. I didn't have. I didn't work out my electronic version. <laughs> uh, I will. I will from now on. Can tell you that. <laughs> um, Eleven hundred. An extra battery. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I started with a hundred percent, so I'm. <laughs> I'm still pretty good. Um, okay. Post out. What about, under, okay, so we're not gonna worry about the organizational numbering because we're gonna change, we're gonna make this all work so that it looks very much like the one from the League of Cities and Towns. Uh, so we will try to make this as, um, Yeah, that's really the main difference between the two is the, the organization. It is. The wording is all virtually that. The wording is almost identical. Here's where there's a place. I'm gonna, we're gonna sort of sit through this community. Do you, do you see where it says community relations? Do you all see where it says that? Page okay. three. That, is that page three? Uh, sort of the bottom up? Yep. Good. Um, so here are, some of the here are some of the um, best let's put it away best practices that we would expect. Be courteous and professional. You introduce yourself to the person. I mean, I thought the best way to read this was to actually imagine yourself at a traffic stop. The most common way that we interact with a PD. Yeah, is that the first thing you do when you go to stop somebody at a traffic stop? Is that you? Uh, I like that. All right. That's okay. Um, you introduce yourself. Yep. That's what I like to see. Officer Ferrara, the Bennington Police Department. <laughs> Officer Ferrara, the Bennington Police Department. Yep. That's what I like. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you state. Right? The reason for that as, as soon as practical. Okay. Here's, uh, does you all, do you all see at C under that section? Here's where I think we could change the language. In short, unless, and for our others. For you can tell me some reasons why I'm just having done this, which could be. Ensure that detection or detention is no longer, uh, let me write, read it again. Ensure that a detention is no longer than necessary to take the appropriate action for the known or suspected offense. And the Bennington Police Department conveys the purpose of, reason, of the reasonable delays. Is it that the Bennington Police Department will communicate with me if, the, if there's a delay in letting me go on my way. So what that's saying is, again, the traffic stop scenario. Yep. If I have you pulled over. Yep. But a good song is playing in my car and I don't want to miss it, I don't, I don't get to keep you there until I get to finish listening and singing along with my song. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. But, it, but if the, let's say the computer crashes in the midst yeah. of your putting in my right. license all, all tape. That would be reasonable stuff. Right. And, and you would explain that to me, right? Yep. That's right. Sorry, sorry. Sometimes it happens if someone doesn't have their license on them and I have to look up their information stuff. Like that. Perfect. Sorry, that took so long. It took yeah. a little bit to be able to look up all of your information make sure everything's okay. Right. And so the officer mm -hmm. conveys the purpose for the reasonable delays. Right. Okay. Not the police department. It could be the Bennington Police Department officer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, does that make sense? Just 
Yeah, yeah just to be clear. We've done that through the hole already through the hole. Right? Yeah, we, we want to make sure that, again, the provided by the police department officer's name verbally when requested, of course, that. So again, it's the officer who does this. I just think that the word got left out. That's all that. Yep, it looks like it because on D it has the Yep, exactly. So after, on C, this is line five. No, and then line six. Yep. And we could say, da, 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 and the Bennington Police Department officer conveys. So you're adding the word officer. If we think we need the word Bennington Police it could be just the officer. We could eliminate the word BP. The Bennington Police Department, we can eliminate all of that. Because in this case, we're, we are talking about it. And then, right. Does that make all make that That's a perfect scenario. Perfect scenario. Questions, anyone? Places where we like to change. So could I walk that by again? What did you just gonna say? Provide the officer's name? Uh, yeah. no, nope, it's the one above that. Yeah, okay, the officer there. Yeah, I'm going to the second one. About under provide the Bennington Police. Um, we expect that they will provide. I actually think it here's an easy way to deal with this, all this stuff, Bennington Police Department each time is after the first time that we've said it in, on the, in the paper, Do PPD. just put BPD yep. in, in, so Michelle, we did this in the last one on use of force, so you don't need to do it now, okay. but every time it goes through, and every time you see BP, the Bennington Police Department, substitute BPD. After you've included that at the very front end, and I think it's, Online, uh, on line eight, uh, oops. Uh, excuse me, on line 10 of the purpose, on your purpose of page one, right? Yep. Good. And I think we should just make sure we deal with that all the time. Okay, here's where I, and, and by the way, we're now into sort of procedure stuff, but I think these are, so these are the sections where we're gonna be making suggestions to the chief, and the chief will probably take many of our suggestions to heart most of them, if, unless it changes the actual, I don't think in this case we've done any. Here's where I, um, does everybody understand what we're talking about in terms of responding to bias-based reports or reports regarding bias from the community? So what are we talking about there in that scenario? Can you think of any situation? When someone makes a call or a complaint and it's obvious in the complaint that there that no law is being broken and that there's just someone, a person of color or someone they would rather not see somewhere, they decide to call police. Exactly. Somebody makes a 911 call because there's a suspicious black man in my neighborhood walking his dog. And he comes by about every 10 minutes. I'm thinking of a guy who walks his husky in my neighborhood. So yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. What should happen, uh, that's one of the scenarios. Um, or could it be a scenario where a person is actually reporting that somebody else is acting maybe illegally or in, in a cross, but, they, but it, it in fact is a bias crime that they're reporting. They're reporting an actual bias crime. Those are two different things, but they're being dealt with under the same paragraph right here, I think, for the same section. Does everybody sort of see that? Yeah. So any, another option? Does it, do people see another option? It could be that, that somebody's reporting that one of the officers acted in a bias. 
but out of some bias. Right? That could be another scenario. All of those are, it seems to be, covered here. The main ones are really the, again, hopefully I don't mind reading this just wrong. But the main ones seem to be the first two that we talked about. Right? That there's, Alana has suggested, somebody's making a phone call to the police, a 911 call that's clearly based on just some racial bias, let's use that example. Or someone has made a call that there's a fight going on outside and there's a lot of racial language being used in that photo. Two cars are stopped in front of the house. I can see myself making that phone call. Absolutely. Right? So that's another incident. So it's, in that case, that appears to be a possibility. So that's, let's, let's think about those. It's always, to me, it's always helpful to think about scenarios to when I'm reading this, so that I can get this. What does the first part say? You, you receive a call, you're trying to figure out If the complainant can't offer any further information of the fact that this person is black, then the complainant will be biased and shift officer will be in contact at the first opportunity. Does that make sense? So Dan, you're the officer out there. You, you receive that call, and you, you answer the call. And your perception is, this is clearly based only on race. Nobody's done anything illegal. What do you do? Well, like it says, uh, it would be the, the actual complainant would be contacted to see what the actual issue was that drove them to call the police. Yeah. Um, and if it's, I mean, me myself, if it's articulable, uh, if they actually use 911 to say, hey, there's a person of color on, on this bench right here and I don't like it type thing. Yeah. I would actually arrest that person for the person who made the call. Yep. For yep. the use of the emergency services. Ah. Okay. So that's that's, good. that's just me myself. Uh, yeah. You asked what I would do that. No, that's I, that's what I'm asking. But I mean obviously at the, at the very least the policy requires that that the, that person who made the call is going to be told our shift supervisor and I'm trying to make sense who is is that like the corporal or the so sergeant? Or the sergeant, corporal, or senior officer that's on. That's on duty at that point. And that they will be in contact at their first opportunity if they have. Yes. They're going to they're contact. Okay. I go back to my mental illness question. What time, if anything, ah. would you be calling mental illness counselor into the, into the call? Do you have any sense of when that might happen? Or would that be a part of this conversation? Mm -hmm. If, if you clearly see this person has mental illness, I got a nephew, for instance, who's yeah. mentally ill, that's causing problems, and uh, I don't know if the police could, I, the police could do it, but I think a counselor should be in that situation too to help um, break it down so they're not seeing the police officer, but they're seeing another type of helper in that situation. So, so, so you're so you're talking about if someone called the police on someone that is. That seems to be uh, how uh, that, or you perceive it as you get to a case. Yeah. At one point, we just start coming in mental health counseling. We're saying, are they yeah. part of the police department's uh, yeah. go to? We, we refer UCS to a lot of people. Okay. So, yeah. That's, that's all, very good. Cool. Cool. I, I think that should be an early on piece. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's where the, in, in the heading of this particular policy, one of the places, that, one of the things I would like is for there to be related policies to go, and I can see in the fair and impartial policing policy, one of the things, since it is the foundation of much of what the PD does, yep. is it related to the responding to people with mental health issues policy? Because there will be, a, there is a policy, and there will be, or there will be a policy based on that precise, in, and then I could see it happening in two cases. One, the caller to 911 could have a mental could be mentally ill. Yep. Right. 
tear down schizophrenia. The person they are calling about could be mentally ill, which is different. Right. In which case, that pol the policy then shifts. Well, one of the ways in which this gets enacted is to follow the policy about responding to people with mental illness. Yes, Kate. You know, I, I, I think that would be really good whether you designate that as a separate policy or if that becomes part of a procedure in a certain situation. But I think about, again, the issue of homelessness in the community. And I think sometimes maybe people are called into a situation where somebody's complaining about somebody and what they, that person might need is it legal intervention or right. you know, police intervention? They may need services. They may need some sort of support. So in that situation, again, that's sort of above and beyond. That's part of the services that the, the police department provides. But that's a separate issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, but the police have to have, if we understand what policy does, they need to be driven by policy that they that they've adopted and the town has adopted, right? Right, right. So if one of the six or actually now eight policies that the that this these groups are, are, are looking at, one of them will be the response to people experiencing mental health crises or issues. And so that policy probably will engage It'll formalize what is so far is currently a fairly informal relationship. So with UCS. Okay. Well, in a situation where it involves more of a homeless situation or, or a demographic situation, in this exactly. Case, yeah. Then it's not a crime. It's supposing, like, let's use right. examples. Supposing the example is somebody's downtown pandering, or they're they're, they're downtown. Pandering. You know, you know, doing something that is, again, something we don't want people to do, like panhandling or something right. like that. Right. But that might be different from somebody who's sleeping right. somewhere where they shouldn't be sleeping, but they have no, they have no place to alternative. Go. They need service. They don't need legal intervention. They don't need to. So you know, when, when someone calls the police, we have no other option other than respond. to respond. Correct. Right. 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 Um, when we respond to any call, it's our job to that call, we assess what's going on, and if it's a case of, of mental illness or homelessness or, or medical emergency, what have you, it's then our job to get them to the resources that they need to. Yes. So with the homelessness, it's like, like if it's someone sleeping at a cold lake, something like that, we either try to get them around to the homeless shelter, try to help them get in contact with two one one, bring them to the hospital if they're showing signs that they might need to be evaluated, stuff like that. So if there are those other resources that's involved, it might not be stated in this policy because it's kind of a, a, it's kind a, of a working system. Right. So things right. will happen, it's just not always black and white. Right. Well, I'm wondering, should there be some mention? And that's exactly, not probably in this, but certainly one of the reasons to have policies that relate is, I mean, I'm, and I'm thinking about homelessness a perfect example. You're absolutely right. When not all homelessness is related to mental illness, although a bunch of it is. So when let's let, let me use an example. Let's say a person is living in their vehicle and their vehicle is parked on the town street after the, whatever the date is. When, Dan, when do we get rid of the Whatever it is, when the following yeah. Winter park begins mm -hmm. November 11th, or November 1st. Well, it's first. different between uh, North Bennington and Bennington, but yeah. That, okay, that so what, yeah, whenever that is, and I can never remember it, but I usually. So let's say they're on the street. They, now they, the car can be ticketed. But the reason they're there is A, they're homeless, and B, they're mentally ill. So the, so the issue isn't, you know, we're not going to ticket our way out of this scenario. It seems to me that, that through policy and through practice and through, I mean, what we end up having is procedures that develop that we, that we 
develop these relationships with with other organizations that can help. No, I so, don't mean to digress. I no, it's not a digression. It's precisely to the point of this. The, the only question is, where's the best place to, to attach this? My worry about attaching to fair and impartial policing policy would be that you could do that with virtually everything that the PD does. Except yes. you put in the term demographics in your physical description. So oh, I, I still like that, or homelessness. Or I'm, homelessness. So then right. you've got a, a category that, that could use some clarification. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I'm thinking already ahead that in the, in the policy that's going to be designed in a few weeks regarding encounter, I don't know what the term is going to be, Mental health, mental health crises could also include other crises like homelessness because those two are often very much together. There's not like there's not this, a great deal of this. I know of many. I mean, and not all homeless people are crazy. That's absolutely true. So that's a policy that you. Yes, I'm thinking of that. But I want to. What I want to do in the long run is read. It's linked us back in, and our hope is that these are not going to be on paper policies. I know that the chief really wants to be able to computerize this stuff so that, I mean, it takes a little money to do that, but so that the policy is available to Dan if he needs it out on the street, if he needs a quick reference. Mm -hmm. But it would be available to the public if they wanted to see Well, that's also true. Policy. Yes, that's, and that will be, that will be the case. You betcha. That's also a thank you for raising that. Absolutely. Yeah. It is our goal that these sorts of policies are going to be available to the general public so they understand this is what's going on. These are the words, these are the rules. Yeah. It builds trust. Here's what I'm going to do because we've been at it for about an hour and 20 minutes, 22 minutes. I'm going to have us stop or set minutes. In other words, have us come back at 5.30 and try to drive through to the end, which could be about 45 minutes to an hour. Is that okay with everybody? That gives people a chance to get up, walk around, take a quick breath. If you need to go to the bathroom, please do so. Can we find out anything about electricity? You know, look up, uh, it's out throughout the whole town. In town. It yeah, it's, no like, it's like almost half the town. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. Bruce, there's no uh, indication of when it's going to come back on. So much. Okay, so we're, we're going to work. Yeah, we're going to work. Ten we're going to work as long as we work. And hopefully you've got a nice big battery and you can rest it right now. There you go. The number of people affected is okay. So, we were, when we ended, we were, oh yes. We were looking at that process about responding to bias-based reports or reports regarding bias from the community. And it talks about the shift supervisor. At the conclusion of the call, the shift supervisor will document in writing the contact using uh, the Bennington Police Department CAD system, computer assisted design. What's CAD? It's just our system that we use for reporting. Reporting. What we type our reports on is just. Oh, okay, that's the name of it. Okay. I was going to, that's what I didn't know. And uh, if the Bennington PD, BPD receives a report of a potentially biased or hate motivated incident, the BPD department shall either dispatch an officer to evaluate the complaint to the supervisor or refer the caller to the officer in charge. And then I'm going to suggest. Okay, Bob, you're going to, I'm going to suggest it's in the version that Bob has. Uh, what do you give me? Yep. At the end, just before it's, before training, I'm going to suggest an E. That the chief of police shall submit the report of that incident to the attorney general's office per uh, attorney, and I can't remember whether it's attorney general policy or, but I believe it's 
state statute. Um, this, the state in, in the last couple of years changed the statute and it basically says that all biased or potentially biased incidents must be reported to the Attorney General's Office of Civil Rights. So for example, the event that took place at Lake Karen earlier this spring, and I, and I know for a fact that the Chief did report that up to the AG's office. So the Chief is doing it, it's just not in policy. And it ought to be, in, and probably it's because that was a change that took place after this model policy was put in place. So I think I was looking to see if there was any place. So if, if you don't mind, I think this is just something that the chief is doing already. It's just we need to put it into the policy. And we'll then have the, the big lawyers get a chance at fixing the language. But Michelle, yeah, just before training, there should be an E, mm -hmm. which would say, The, uh, the chief, because specifically the regulation requires the chief to do this, the chief of police or his or her designee shall make a report to the attorney general's office per, and then we'll list the statute. But I don't, I don't have it with me. It's not even over there, I don't think. You see where I am? About, what page again? I'm on page bottom of four. And I think I put it in yeah, the AG. the AG, that's what you have. Yeah, that's all I wrote in there. AG office. Yeah, the AG's office. And it's really the Office of Civil Rights. What they're trying to do is create a, a view of bias type crimes, or bias type incidents, not crimes necessarily, because it wouldn't necessarily arise to a crime. Uh, but incidents across the state of Vermont. That's what they're trying to collect. So we're just saying, which I, I know the chief said that. Up. So right now the language is sort of sketchy and iffy. So I have the chief of police or his or her designee shall make a report to the uh, Vermont Attorney General's Office, comma okay. Division of Civil Rights, and then I'll. The, I'll have the reference when the time comes. I have it at home. Okay. Not helpful here, but I have it at home. Um, okay. I got I got yep. something that came to mind. Um, under, uh, under bias, what about, you know, if you've got um, a resident that's been kind of a, a chronic offender, and now they're trying to get their life back together. And you sure. know, you know, they've got a, you know, they've got a car, and they've got a wife, or they've got a girlfriend that's pregnant, and they got to keep up with the, you know, with the, with, with that, with the bills, with that. Yep. And, you know, so and then you've got officers that may be like pulling them over for. So are you suggesting, let me, let me see where I can see where you, I, I think I see where you're going, and I, under personal characteristics. Okay. Is that where you're thinking? I, I didn't, I don't have a specific line here, but um, yeah. Okay, so you go back to right two. Here. So this will be tricky, but it's possible. You know, we talk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We talked a little bit about probable cause and reasonable suspicion. Right. You know, and, and somebody be somebody like that could be uh, you know, could be pegged. You yeah. know, even if they've got like maybe they've got some like mental health issue going on. Yeah. You know? Or and, it's just yeah, the uh, what was it? A, a friend of mine in a previous um, not this department at all. Very different kind of department over in New York State 
said, you know, it's, our tendency is to look because it's just normal. I, I asked him at one point, why do you keep arresting this client? Why do I, why do I keep her? He says, well, you have to tell your client to stop doing what he's doing. And I said, but what if he didn't do what, what you're suggesting? And he said, well, it looked a lot like his. Okay. And, you know, as it turns out, it was. He, my, my client eventually fessed up to me. But, um, I don't think that's always the case. It isn't always the case. And, and I, I know that the department there had something, and it wasn't in it, but they didn't have anything like a fair and impartial policing policy. But, and, and they were even remotely at, this point, at the place that this department was at. Um, but they did have something, that the chief put in something that said that, that he didn't want his officers depending upon someone's prior contact with, it was, that's not the language, prior criminal history. The problem is prior criminal history is a part of what you would do. I mean, you do look at that, mm -hmm. right? You have to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, don't, I just don't think that's part of this. I, I, I need to think about it, Greg. I need to do. Um, remembering that by implication, it, it could be in there already. You know, one of, yeah, it's a question of, and that department was always interested in the usual suspect. Well, oh, that was, uh, and my client actually was one of those usual suspects. I'll, I'll have to admit to it there. Um, let me come back to that, and I will make it. Well, I got I was just. No, to, I think it's a good one. Think, not just that, but that was why when uh -huh. um, I grabbed that piece um, uh, online that was under under our uh, um, under this uh, uh -huh. this policy, and you know they had Brattleboro in there, so I wanted to take Brattleboro. Uh, and come kind of compared to what we have. Right. And does um, Brattleboro, I, I, I don't have Brattleboro's. Well, that's why I, with, if you gotta, you yeah. gotta go through the, the yeah. period I, of the policing to find the Brattleboro one. Yes, I do. Yeah. I, and I have that. And I didn't see any difference between the Brattleboro policy. The Brattleboro policy essentially is the fair and impartial policing policy, it's the model policy, it's the same as kind of as far as I can tell. I didn't get a chance to, you know, like, well, to compare yet. I, 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 I did compare it, and it seemed like it was, except in organization, mm -hmm. it was essentially word for word. Okay. And the state police's policy was almost exactly this word for word as well. Um, can we move on to training and just look through and see if there were any places? I didn't see any there. And does anybody have any questions about training? I'm assuming, Dan, Dan you can help. Um, you all get training in fair and impartial policing at the academy and elsewhere? Correct, every, uh, it's a requirement to- Is this one of the ones that, go ahead. It's a requirement to keep our certification that we uh, go through this training every two years. Every two years. Two years. Yep. By That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and it's the BCJTC that gives you your certification. It's either, well, the uh, our police certification? Yeah. Yeah, they, they hold our certification as, as right. a police officer. Right. And then the training is either come from them or is from someone or an entity that's approved by them. Right. But it's just so I wanted everybody to know that the, that the officers here are certified police officers. They're certified by that Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council, which is an odd entity because it doesn't really be, it, it's made up of a number of different um, law enforcement agencies, basically. Every single law enforcement agency in Vermont. Yeah. Yep. Right. Um, so, 
Does the department have uh, French and Spanish speaking officers or access to that help? Uh, so there is a, uh, if there is a language barrier, um, there is a, for lack of a better term, like a hotline that gets utilized. Well, that's very far from human I was going to, I was going to ask, do you, how many of these, how many non-English speaking person does the department come across on? Uh, in, in my entire career, I have never had to use that hotline. <laughs> um, you can use, they either at least know enough to get by where you can right. adjust to what's going on in the conversation, or they're also fluent in English as well as their native language. Sure. It's helpful, but at least it's nice that there is that hotline yep. for translation. Any questions there? Any questions on accountability and compliance items? Um, under establishing identity, this is why I think we can move fairly quickly. Um, everybody understands the language and why. Dan, you may want to. You may want to help us with. Do you have Do you have many circumstances in which there's somebody with no. Um, legally recognized identification, government issued IDs. Uh, once in a blue moon, you'll get someone that's uh, visiting from overseas and they're driving around with like their Italy driver's license or something like that. But an Italian driver's license still allows them to drive in the United States, correct? It, it uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a. Uh, it's a gray area, yeah, but okay. no one would be an eyeball. Thing. It is, yeah. You don't come across it too often, right. and, and right. really try to make a thing of it. I mean, right. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm with you. I'm trying to beat the the, the light. The light. light. Yep. Yeah. If everybody understands, the light's gonna go. And, yeah, it's going quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, okay. Everybody understands C. I think <laughs> this is all pretty much um, for those of you who are warning another place of, of connection between this policy and others. We will be doing a, a one on traffic stops, a policy just on traffic stops. <coughs> and um, if you look on page Six at the very top. This is where this interconnection between Bennington PD and federal immigration <coughs> comes to the fore. At the um, you can use federal to <coughs> federal resources to establish identity. But basically, that's it. That's that's really what we're what you're doing. You're not trying to enforce immigration status, particularly civil. You know, because most if somebody's here illegally, that's a civil matter, and that's not something that PD that's what PD doesn't have any jurisdiction for. That's basically all this is saying. I think I gave you copies, sent you copies of the code. Um, of the federal code, um, I would like to see those cited in the front of this document when the time comes when we get to that. But did anybody have any questions about this whole section about the use of um, what that, what the police department shall not do? Dan, does this come up very often in your experience? The immigration thing? Yeah. No. I myself have come across it. I think I've only heard one or two stories over. So. Yeah. We're, we're not in a place where it happens. I mean, if we were up north a little bit further. Oh, yeah. If we were up further north, it, it might happen quite a bit. Um, in my 
experience five years living in the New York, Ontario, Quebec, or can't happen quite now. Did I miss it? Is there something about drug uh, enforcement? Um, it no. uh, you know, obviously, if, if there's a stop, I mean, drug enforcement is not, you can, I mean, stopping somebody in order to enforce um, illegal drug laws is not a violation of their immigration status. It doesn't, it doesn't relate to their immigration status. Now, while they're identified as, as illegal possessors or possessions, maybe with, with um, intent to sell, because it's that much, um, that they may come to the knowledge of the federal authorities if they are, but, illegal, but, the, but it's just clearly stopping them because maybe there's a traffic violation and in the midst of the traffic violation you get a, you, you can find other things. That is recall several years ago there was a gentleman that was stopped because of suspicion right. of drugs. There was no, right. there was no, uh, right. And then, no that's right. The, the court, the Supreme Court of Vermont, basically determined that whatever, and that was the difference between suspicion, right, um, and probable cause. And the search, if there, and I don't, I can never repeat those facts of those cases straight, but if there was a search, the search wasn't supported by reasonable and typical suspicion at that point. Um, so the, so the, that, that, but that gets decided by the Supreme Court. We don't put that, we, we recognize that, and, and there will be a place for that in, under traffic, but not under fair and partial Okay, reason. thank you. Yeah. Um, victim and witness interaction. Does anybody have anything there? I don't think I did. As, as this went on, it got less and less there seems to be less and less to say. Yeah. So for example, they give examples of what you cannot do. So sweeps, for example, sweeps intended solely to locate and detain undocumented immigrants without reasonable suspicion or probable cause of a crime shall not be conducted unless acting in partnership with a federal agency as part of a formal agreement entered into by the governor. So even the state, the, the town can't do anything with that. Can you all read? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the last is the savings clause, which just basically says the same thing. And we are losing whatever precious light we have. <laughs> Does, um, does anybody have anything that they want to cover? Given the nature of our capacity to see, that we did not do. I just had one question. You yes. Had some copies of federal. Yes. What was they were the the two statutes that were identified under. Hang on. Let me get back to the section. Um, That's what I'm uh, eight, where it says the two federal statutes. Uh, this is on page eight. Uh, 8 U.S.C., that's the United States Code, sections 1373 and 1644. I believe I sent those to you on a single page. They're not very long, and, they're, and they basic, if I sent them to you, you, would, you got them in an email just in the last day or so, 24 hours. And <coughs> I just want, in case somebody had some idea, it's basically what's encapsulated in this here. The, the, the statute really does, the federal the statute says um, that local and state agencies may not prevent or restrict federal employees from communicating with other governmental officials regarding an individual's citizenship or immigration status. So the town, we could not pass a law that says that Dan cannot communicate with ICE if ICE communicates with him. We just can't. 
Their, their law is superior to ours. <coughs> and we have lost whatever light. Yes. Um, I'm going to suggest that we adjourn. You, Michelle will do her magic, give it to Dan, Dan will give it to me, and I will then send out and give you opportunity to comment, and I may give you a few more days than we had for the other ones, if only because we had less visible light to work with, and we had no screen to work with. We had very little power. Oh, well, we still stuck it out. We did. Thank you, everybody. Did you have any parting words? So, Bruce, yes. I just wanted to say thank you very much for mm -hmm. passing all this information off to us. You know, yeah. we had resources to look at. And I just had one comment about the model policy. Yeah. Which I really liked. Yes. I thought that the idea that it included a description of police services and that oh, there was yes. Thank you. That was a point that I. If you if you saw the IACP uh, model policy, there is a, a definition there of police services, which I which I thought was incredibly which I thought was very helpful. And if it's possible, we might we might try adding that and seeing it just in the definitions and seeing what the chief thinks about that and what Rob thinks about that and and I will do it just on. A, We'll set it up in a, another way, and Michelle, I'll get that to you. Don't worry about just it. Just send it to me. I'll, I'll send it to the two of them. Yeah. Since yeah. Actually, I don't have Michelle, so I will send it to you. We'll, we'll take care of it. Yes, but I will send that out. It's a definition. You found it in the IACT model policy. It's a really good definition of police services. Yeah. Yeah. It's very enlightening. Yeah. Yeah. That was the best part of that model. Any other questions? We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.